On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, 2023 containers, is it boom or is it bust? Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Happy New Year. So with the new year, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at the different sectors in the maritime industry and discuss where they stand from the previous year and then going forward. So we're going to take a look at containers first. Before we do so, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into containers. So obviously the biggest thing in the container sector is the wind down from the boom period that had been not just 2022, but also 2021. Let's not forget that we saw record years across those two. If you look at this point last year, you would remember there was about 109 ships sitting off the ports of LA and Long Beach on January 9th, waiting to get down. And it's only recently that we've seen that backlog cleared and even the backlog that had shifted to the East and Gulf Coast is now down. And that is an important thing. We're seeing container ships getting back on their routine schedules. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we're seeing right now is what's called blank sailing, where ocean carriers are canceling sailings of vessels. Coinciding with that, with the de decline in the freight rates that we saw happening, we also saw an easing of the spot rates. And we're seeing the reduction in the total amount of cost to move a container coming around. Uh, we're going to see a renegotiation for annual contracts in the United States to Asia start on May 1st, and that's going to be a big issue, is what are going to be those new rates? And you can expect not to see a lot of the long-term rates that were negotiated during the height of COVID remain into effect as spot rates have fallen. The other issue we see here is the shift of containers from the West Coast to the East Coast. So right at the beginning of July, we saw this kind of plateau and then drop in container uh, container numbers. And that coincided with a couple of other issues. Number one, July 1st of 2022, we saw the ILWU, the International Longshore Warehouse Union and the Pacific Maritime Association's contract expire. And they're in the midst of a contract renegotiation. However, the fear of that contract renegotiation caused many shippers to shift their cargo from the West Coast to the East and Gulf Coast, taking advantage of the new lane of the Panama Canal that opened in 2016. Now ships that, that can carry 15,000 containers, vice 5,000 containers, can now directly access the East and Gulf Coast of the United States. And they're also being shipped on the ultra-large container vessels. These are vessels over over 18,000 containers that are going to Europe and then being transloaded at hub ports over to smaller vessels toward the East and Gulf Coast. But you also have a lot of other issues that are impacting the West Coast. You have issues with class one railways. You had the break-ins on the Alameda corridor. You had potential rail strikes. You have the difficulties in scheduling rail because rail uh, uh, trains have gone from a half mile long to two miles long, which makes scheduling very difficult. You had congestion in yards in the central part of the United States. You also had truck, trucking issues in both uh, technology in some of the LA Long Beach ports. For scheduling, you had issues with AB5 and the independent truck drivers. And now as of January 1st, 2023, all trucks that have engines prior to the 2010 are illegal in California. That's going to mean that a lot of drayage and a lot of long haul trucks can no longer operate within California. And that means that cargo is going to have to go other places or it's gonna be more expensive. Going on, we see that massive decline in imports there from August downward, and it's a pretty precipitous drop. And this has to do with two coinciding issues, obviously a decrease in demand in the United States and also a decrease in exports out of places like Asia. And the question is, does one beget the other? Uh, we also see the decline in freight rates. As this rate falls, so does the freight rates fall. And we've seen that with spot rates coming down, and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. Uh, we also see that the uh, ocean carriers are facing a big issue here because they want to maintain their profitability. Remember, 2021 was the most profitable year in the history of the freight line of the ocean carriers. 2022 stands as a good perspective to be the same thing. Uh, in 2021, the ocean carriers made more profits than they did in the entire past decade 
combined? Uh, how do they keep those profits at high levels? Uh, sailors with cash in their pockets are a dangerous thing. How are they spending that money? Where is it going to go? Especially when you consider the fact that there are new issues that the ocean carriers are going to face going forward, which we're going to address. On the plus side, if you're shipping cargo right now, your reliability to get your cargo at the time required is increasing. It has been on an increase since June of 2022. The irony of ocean shipping is the more you pay, the least reliable it is. The less you pay, the more reliable it is. Go back to pre-COVID, we were talking about reliability rates of 70 to 80%. During COVID, we were talking about 20 to 40% at times. And now we're seeing increased reliability. That also means that the time it takes to ship cargo is going back down again. And that that's an important statistic. Reliability and less time to transport is a big benefit for shippers to get their cargo. Freight rates. We mentioned freight rates before. This is the Freightos index, and it shows you freight rates across the board. This is their global index. And while the global index doesn't really translate to anything significant or, or specific. It's really a composite of all rates. It gives you an indication where freight rates are. And if you look at pre-COVID, you can see where that index was bouncing right around 1500 prior to that. And then all of a sudden when COVID hit, you had that huge massive spike. And particularly when you go into the end of 2021, 2022, you're bouncing around there right around 10,000. And then all of a sudden, come the summer, you see it start dropping and dropping and then literally off a cliff drop. But one of the things to note right here is not only is it coming down, but it's ticking back up. At the very end of December, we saw a slight little uptick here. But where it stopped is still higher than the pre-COVID. If you look at some specific rates, so for example, this is the West Coast, uh, excuse me, the uh, China East Asia to West Coast. It is down, obviously, and coming down. Uh, it is really low, which is fantastic, but that has a lot to do with the fact that LA and Long Beach are doing everything they can to get freight into them. They really want to see it. If you look at the East Coast rates, uh, what you're seeing right here is East Coast rates are plateauing out. So if you're shipping to the East Coast, you really see these uh, uh, rates beginning to uh, plateau out here quite a bit. And when you start looking at China, East, uh, East Asia to Northern Europe, one of the things you're seeing is the rates are still remaining kind of high and they're actually going back up again. And so it's important to start looking at these rates. Have we bottomed out the freight rates and are we in an uptick heading back up? It's going to be interesting to see exactly where it happens. Remember, we usually see a downturn that coincides with the Lunar New Year, which is a big holiday in Asia. This year it falls on January 22nd, so it's very early. And so usually what you see is a lot of freight get forwarded right now in the weeks prior to this to get it out of Asia before everything shuts down for a week. Is this what we're seeing with this slight uptick now, or is this part of restabilizing the rates and getting back? This is the report as of week 50, so about the third week or second, uh, second week in December from Flexport, showing uh, West Coast, Canadian West Coast, and U.S. East and Gulf Coast ports, uh, the number of ships waiting, the average wait for berth, and most importantly, the rail dwells. And you'll see right there in red, rail dwells at Oakland, New York, New Jersey, and Savannah. Uh, again, Class 1 railways are really one of the big things. How well are those Class 1 railways handling this? Class 1 railways on the East Coast right now are getting slammed. They're, they're dealing with a lot more capacity than they've dealt with in the past. And that's what you're seeing, the red there from New York, New Jersey, and in Savannah. Oakland just has systemic problems. And, and I could do a whole video on Oakland, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, and then when you look at average weight to birth, those are down pretty far. The one exception is still Vancouver, which is recovering still from the Fraser River closures and getting caught back up. This is a story from Greg Miller over at Freightways, and I just wanted to highlight this one section of a story he did. Container rates poised to reset much lower in 2023. Again, he highlights the fact that right now, Asia to Europe contracts reset on January 1. So how do those contracts reset? What are we going to see from the Asia Europe contracts? Because Asia US contracts reset on May 1st. 
are we going to see it? What Greg talks about here is long-term rates are tracked by Zentia. Its long-term contract index held fairly steady in December after falling sharply in November. Zentia's global contract rate average is still up 70% year-on-year this month, and its contract rate assessment for U.S. imports remains 130% higher. This is really just the quiet before the storm, said Zentia CEO Patrick Berlin on Thursday. As more and more long-term contracts expire in the new year, expect the Zentia long-term index to post far greater month-on-month declines. All indicators point toward considerable rate drops from today's levels, with several of the major Far East trades pointing toward new long-term contracts that are much closer to the current far lower spot rate benchmarks. And if you go over to Zentia, one of the things they have here is a survey from their customers. Zero percent, zero of all customers are staying with their long-term contracts. 55% are pushing through with a scheduled request for quote to get new rates. 31 are negotiating upcoming contracts for 2023 for one year. They're getting away from short-term or long-term contracts. And 46% of their customers are considering sustainability in their procurement strategy for 2023 on an informative basis. Sustainability is the big issue that a lot of people are talking about and we're going to come back to. This is from Drury. This is what they look at when they look at their containers, uh, kind of four major things. We already talked about the freight rate, and you see the drop here with the World Container Index. This one is really important, the bunker fuel, the fuel for vessels. If you look at this, you'll be sitting there saying, Sal, this looks good. Fuel rates are coming down. That's great. The problem is if you take this chart out further, fuel rates are much higher than they were pre-COVID. January 1st of 2020, a new fuel standard went into effect that required ships to burn very low sulfur diesel fuel, this top chart right here. Uh, But ships can still burn the older fuel if they have scrubbers. The problem is the scrubbers are going out. Countries are not going to allow scrubbers in. It's going to be harder and harder to get this fuel. And more importantly, IMO, the International Maritime Organization, is putting new standards into effect. And ships have to record their emission standards. They have to get a letter grade. And burning the old fuel versus scrubbers gives them a poor grade. And if you get too many poor grades, your ship can't sail. This means that ships are going to be shifting over to this very low sulfur fuel oil that is much more expensive, two to three times more expensive than the older fuel was pre-COVID. That's going to impact charter rates because it's going to be more expensive to operate vessels. The last thing you see here is the idle fleet. You see the increase in number of ships being idled. Understand that this means that ships are going to be heading the scrap. We didn't scrap too many container ships in 2020 or 2021 because everything that floated was carrying containers. That's going to change, especially with new freighters, uh, new container ships coming online. Expect to see massive scrappings in the yards in Bangladesh, in India, and Pakistan, along with Turkey. And then finally, come over here to Liner Lydica. Their weekly pulse has some really interesting stats right here. So they talk about the fact that the year is ending on a weak note. Freight rates and charter rates are still under pressure. Carriers are banking on mini cargo rush to push for a new round of rate increases on 1 January with vessel utilization out of Asia picking up last week. There's the big issue about the Chinese port congestion. You know, what's happening with COVID in China? Is there going to be shutdowns or is China opening back up? What happens as COVID runs rampant through China? Nobody knows for sure. Again, you have the Lunar New Year hitting on January 22nd. What does that do? And then this last one is really the most important for me. The alliance. This is one of the three big container alliances. Are routing ships returning from the East Coast, U.S. East Coast, and Northern Europe to Asia via the Cape Route? Uh, In a clear sign that excess tonnage is now a bigger problem for carriers while congestion has been relegated to a secondary concern. Why would you sail a ship from the U.S. East Coast and Northern Europe to Asia via the Cape around Africa versus going through the Mediterranean, the Red Sea, and the Suez Canal. Well, number one, Suez Canal rates have gone through the roof. Suez Canal has increased rates at least three times since the beginning of COVID. And it's much more expensive to go through the Suez Canal. Plus, ships aren't carrying as much cargo. The latest ever A, the biggest ones that are out there, went through the Suez Canal in maybe two-thirds to three-fourths capacity. Why pay 
a huge amount of money to go through the Suez Canal when you're not near capacity. The other issue here is IMO 2023, the new fuel standard. Believe it or not, it is much more better for this fuel equation to sail than to sit still. And so if you sail around Africa, it takes you a little bit longer. You can slow steam. You can be much more economical. Sail at a slower speed. You're producing less emissions is what they like uh, than sitting at anchor and burning holes in the ocean. And so that's what a lot of companies are doing. Again, this new fuel standard, IMO 2023, is going to be a big bear to deal with. Uh, so what does this mean for 2023 going forward? We're going to get a good picture of it, I think, right after the Lunar New Year. When we hit February, we'll have a good idea. Are we going to see a big spring back up? Are we going to see a whiplash effect come back up? Or will rates continue to keep declining? Right now, we're seeing a little bit of that uptick to beat this slowdown. And what happens in Asia? What happens in the U.S. and Europe regarding this economic recession? We already see it hitting the, the housing market. But remember, a lot of people, when they have less money to spend, shift their buying patterns. They buy cheaper goods, and a lot of those cheaper goods come from overseas, which means that shipping is still going strong. A lot to digest, a lot to look forward to, but these are the warning signs you should be looking forward to as we hit 2023. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. You can do that by hitting that super thanks button below or head over to Patreon and become a patron, a monthly or yearly subscriber to the channel. Think about the great advice you just got from this channel. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.